Thanks, Mike, for joining me today. Uh, to start, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Mike Grab, and I am the executive director of the Garage at Northwestern University, which is the home of student entrepreneurship here at the university. We serve students from all schools and all levels of study. Um, whoever is interested in startups, technology, entrepreneurship are welcome uh, to bring their ideas to the Garage. Cool. And uh, you joined the Garage as the founding director in San Francisco. What's like the story behind that? What got you excited to work with uh, Northwestern? Yeah, that's right. So I was actually at the time uh, working in venture capital out in the Bay Area. Um, so investing primarily in seed Series A companies. Uh, I'm actually an alum of Northwestern myself. And the garage did not exist when I was a student here. So I had heard about it while I was working in venture out in the Bay Area um, and reached out basically to offer myself as a resource. Uh, we can talk you know, a lot about how important people and mentors and advisors are when it comes to entrepreneurship and startups, but I uh, reached out to offer myself as a resource um, and it turned out they were hiring for a role base in the Bay Area uh, with the goal of building this community of Northwestern alumni, founders, operators, and investors uh, to connect and support each other so that they could be more successful. And then, you know, when relevant, build a bridge back to students here at the university um, when they, you know, needed relevant mentors or advisors or, or customers or stuff like that. So originally got involved basically just because it was my alma mater and really interesting stuff they were working on, but focused more on kind of the alumni out in the Bay Area, uh, then uh, had transitioned now to more student focused work. Cool. And you gave a, a quick overview about the garage. I just want to share a little more background information before we dive into the interview. Uh, so I saw on the website, it's home to over 1500 plus startups. Um, I saw that you guys have three spaces, so one on campus at Northwestern, a space in San Francisco, and then also one in Chicago with partnerships with 1871 and M-Hub. Um, and then I also saw you guys run several programs around startup incubation, student development, and uh, funding opportunities. Uh, kind of curious more about just like how it's structured and how it works with the university. Is this like a nonprofit? And I guess like, how are you guys funded? Yeah, absolutely. So we're funded through a combination of the university and some of our programs are donor funded, which I can get into. Um, as I mentioned, we serve students from all schools and all levels of study at Northwestern. So undergraduate, graduate, Kellogg MBAs, PhDs, JDs, MDs, any student is welcome to bring their idea here at the garage. Uh, we do not take any equity in any of the startups that are incubated at the garage. So the students fully own everything, even if they're getting funding from our programs. Um, and then we run 10 formal programs throughout the year, as you mentioned, kind of depending on where students are in their entrepreneurial journey. So everything from, you know, I have an idea and I'm just starting, or I don't even have an idea, but I know I'm interested in startups, mm -hmm. all the way to during the summer, we run a 10 week pre-accelerated program called Jumpstart, where we give teams $10,000 in 10 weeks of programming uh, to make a ton of progress on their ventures over the summer. That culminates in a demo day. And we also have an annual student startup competition called VentureCat where we award more than $300,000 all in non-dilutive prize money uh, to the top teams. Um, so that kind of runs the gamut. Some of our programs that are donor funded are stuff like the Opportunity Fund, which uh, is up to $1,000 in funding for low income students. So we found that even you know getting registering a domain name and hosting your first website to just test out ideas can be prohibitively expensive for some students. So a program that can help them kind of get started and get their idea in front of people to start to get feedback and iterate is just one example of our donor funded programs. Love that. And you uh, mentioned like you guys serve students of all levels. I guess like how does a student get access to the space? So they just show up and they're welcome or do they have to- Yeah, that's right. So yeah. a couple of different ways. Um, for one, so we have uh, an 11,000 square foot facility here on the north end of the campus at Northwestern. It's open to any student, whether they're in our formal programs or not, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, for some of the programs that are students in our more advanced programs, they actually have 24 seven access and get dedicated desk space and stuff. But any student can show up during the week and just say, you know, they can first of all, just kind of work out of here, have team meetings, that type of stuff, um, but also get ingrained in teams. One of the most common ways that we find students early on in kind of their academic career get involved is through a quarterly event uh, called Startup Matchmaking. So this is when resident teams at the garage that are looking for new team members to join pitch, basically what they're working on, what type of help they're looking for. Uh, it still takes place over Zoom. We found that works the best. And uh, so for instance, this fall, we had 32 teams pitching that were looking for new team members to join and over 300 students attend that were, that were looking to join one of those 30 teams um, that then they can go have conversations with each of them. So it's kind of one of the most common ways that students get involved initially at the garage is by joining an existing startup team. And then you know, a year or so from now, developing their own idea and going through our programs uh, with their own ideas. 
Awesome. And uh, can you talk more about the spaces? So I, I remember watching a video on your website. Looks like you have some really cool stuff, 3D printers, laser cutters, meeting rooms. Uh, I know on your LinkedIn, it says you guys are trying to manufacture serendipity. Is that really like the goal of the spaces and how they're designed or how would you describe it? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, 11,000 square feet is kind of broken into four zones. So up in the front, there's a public cafe where we have free coffee, a bevy machine where students can make their own kind of like flavored soda water and stuff. Um, that is open to any student, anyone to come in, hang out, do whatever, first come, first serve. It also has a bunch of privacy booths where students can take phone calls or Zoom meetings uh, that are completely soundproof. We also have a workspace that kind of doubles, although all of our programs are extracurricular at the garage, we do have some professors at the university, particularly in the Farley Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, that like to teach classes here in the garage just because it is a different space on campus that's kind of interdisciplinary. So we use that for that, as well as, you know, fireside chats, panelists, speaker events, that type of stuff. Uh, then we have our kind of AR, VR media lab. We have all the latest headsets, camera equipment, um, podcast equipment, anything that students want to create from a media perspective, they can use green screens, that type of stuff. Uh, prototyping lab with, as you mentioned, 3D printers, CNC mills, laser cutters, uh, embroidery machine, sewing machines, anything that students want to make physical products for, even if it's not for their business, they can make like swag. So when they're doing a demo day, they have their startup logo on their shirt or that, that type of stuff. And then we have a whole co-working space back here for our resident teams that uh, have to apply each quarter and they get dedicated desk space. They can keep personal items, inventory, that type of stuff. Uh, and as I mentioned, they have 24 seven access as well. Mm -hmm. Meeting rooms, they can book that type of stuff. So, you know, it's a lot packed into a, to a space. Um, when it comes to manufacturing serendipity, this is kind of a personal mission that, that I came up with when I was based out in the Bay Area working for the garage. Uh, the idea being, we kind of talked about a little bit before we started recording, um, all of the information about how to sort of start up an entrepreneurship is like on the internet, but that's not actually like how people get things done and build companies. It's yeah. through other people and connections and introductions. And when you have something like the Garage or Northwestern, which is a, a group of a trusted community where people are willing to help each other out and be vulnerable and be honest and transparent, but also like make introductions because they're a step ahead or a step behind. You have uh, you have this incredible leverage, um, and, and the phrase manufacturing serendipity, um, I interpret as like how can we put these pieces together where something good can happen from it. Um, yeah. And so that's you know part of what the physical space is about, but also what just the broader garage mission is about. Since we've been around for you know eight years now, it's we have folks that have gone and raised tens of millions of dollars that still uh, are mentors at the garage, and that makes it so much more accessible for current students to see. Oh, they were where I am, you know, a couple of years ago, and now they've done X, Y, and Z. I can tap yeah. into their knowledge and expertise um, to to make it easier for me to do that as well. Yeah, love that. It's always great to hear uh, people kind of pay it forward and pay it back to people that helped them before. So, yeah. um, kind of curious to hear more about the student programming. So you mentioned you guys have ten programs. Uh, kind of curious, like, what do you consider when designing and launching uh, a new program? Yeah, uh, the main consideration is the student need, right? So um, when the garage started in 2015, it was one program. It was just residency, which is like the physical space and mentorship. Um, and we built out not only nine additional programs based on the student needs, but also, um, you know, different events like startup matchmaking or funding opportunities or that type of stuff. So one of the things we found, um, you know, for residency, we require teams to be at least two team members and beyond the idea stage. They have to demonstrate that they've actually started to make something and get it in front of users or customers and get feedback. They don't have to have revenue or sales or anything like that, but show that they've done some work and are starting to learn. Mm -hmm. um, we developed our entry level program, the Tinker program, uh, to be something that's not an application, but just a sign up because we wanted to make it more accessible to come to the garage, that you don't have to show up with progress and an idea and traction, that you can show up just wanting to learn and, and kind of get involved in the community. So with the Tinker program, it's just a sign up, it's not an application. You get a 10 week kind of drip campaign about the fundamentals of starting a startup. You get put into our student Slack channel, our newsletter with upcoming events and resources and office hours. So you start to get access to some of the resources before you get to the stage for those later programs. Other programs, you know, when the garage first opened, it was predominantly uh, white male engineers who showed up into the space. Um, and so we had to be really intentional. The garage doesn't sit under the business school or the engineering school. We serve students from all schools, um, but we've had to be really intentional to make sure that the students that are involved in our programming are reflective of the greater student body here at the university. So a couple of programs we've developed include Propel, which is a quarterly cohort program for women entrepreneurs. 
they meet on a weekly basis, get a mentor who's a woman out in the industry and up to a thousand dollars for their initial expenses. We just launched last year a pro program called Luminate, which is for first generation and low income students. Um, again, a cohort program to help them get involved at kind of the top of funnel to then mm -hmm. funnel into our programs like residency and our summer accelerator program and uh, you know venture competition and all that. Great. And uh, how does the garage measure, measure success for its programs? I think you mentioned one of them that needs to be reflective of the greater student body. What yeah. are other factors that you guys look at when you decide like, oh, we should continue this or we should try something else? Yeah, it's one of my favorite questions because if you talk to uh, university entrepreneurship centers across the country, across the world, they all have this and like no one seems to have like a pinned down answer of like, what yeah. is it? Uh, I want to be clear that like at the garage, it is an educational experience here. So the goal is not just to turn out as many venture backable technology, scalable startups as possible. That does happen. It's a side effect of the work that we do. But all ideas are welcome here at the garage from nonprofits to more media based things to small businesses. Um, and, and to be honest, like being a founder and entrepreneur, I think a lot of students learn is not for everyone, but that's just as valuable of an experience for them to have while they're here at the garage. Uh, while they're students, while they're low risk, instead of, you know, five years out of school, quitting their job and trying it out and figuring out it's not for them. Um, so the education is a huge component. One of the metrics that I'm most proud of is that 95% of the students who pass through the garage tell us that it meaningfully enhanced their Northwestern experience. Um, so whether or not their individual ventures succeed or fail, they're glad that they did it and they feel like they've learned something, they've gained skills, they're more confident, they know they have agency in the world. Um, and so when they're going to do their next venture, whether that is a startup that they're leading, whether they're you know, joining a technology company or an existing startup out in the real world, they're more confident they have a bigger skill set than they would have if this entity did not exist. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we love to brag about like, you know, the undergraduate student who created Hubley Surgical, which is a safer cranial drill that got FDA approval and raised millions of dollars and is being used to drill into real humans in hospitals. Like that's an awesome success story. But just mm -hmm. as successful are all the students who came and tried something out and figured out what they want to do with the rest of their life, or at least what they want to do kind of immediately after school. So um, it's really a mix of both the qualitative and a little bit of quantitative when it comes to like, what are we optimizing for here? Yeah, makes sense. Um, and you mentioned that uh, the garage is welcome to any type of business, so small business, nonprofit, startups. I'm kind of curious, like what the breakdown is right now. Is it still predominantly tech startups or what are people building at the garage? Yeah, it is. It is uh, a majority tech startups. Um, what I find both interesting and inspiring at the garage is having worked in you know Silicon Valley and venture. Um, it was not uncommon to meet founders who you would just get the sense that they were like starting a startup to say they were a founder or to like raise capital or like they didn't necessarily care what they were building or working on. It was just like I want to be a founder, so I'm going to find something I can fundraise for. Yeah. Um, what I find here is overwhelmingly the students are trying to solve the problems that they see in the world. Um, and they have like a deeper mission and vision of like this bigger theme that they want to solve that they feel they have agency to do. Um, yeah. And so for a lot of that, that comes in wanting to scale into something that can have a big impact. Um, but as I mentioned, others are kind of local nonprofits that deal with like the Evanston community and stuff. So it's definitely, uh, you know, it scales towards kind of technology startups. But I think the overwhelming thing is that like, they're problems that they're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. And do you have a rough ballpark of like what percentage of student founders you work with at the garage continue on their startup or small business or nonprofit uh, after graduation? Do you yeah, about 10% will continue on with the ventures they start while they're students at the garage. Um, even more will, you know, might go get a job in tech or even consulting or yeah. I think something that then return to the startup ecosystem a few years after they graduate. But 10% yeah. kind of graduate and continue working on their venture either because you know, they've won something like VentureCat and have $150,000 of runway, or they yep. get a program like Y Combinator or Techstars, or they continue it on as like a side hustle as well, so. Yeah, cool. And uh, you've probably worked with over a thousand student founders now. I'm kind of curious, like, what do you think, or what are you seeing as like the biggest challenges they're facing today when considering being an entrepreneur? Is it like access to funding? Is it good mentorship? Uh, yeah, what is what are they encountering? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, the market today compared to two years ago is just like access to funding, but I don't think that's yeah. unique to students at this point. Um, I think, you know, kind of perennially unique to students is in, in what used to be more of a, a barrier for students at Northwestern and in the Midwest was that getting funding as a student or as a recent graduate. Um, I actually think that 
COVID and the pandemic did a huge favor to founders not in Silicon Valley because all of a sudden you had, you know, uh, Bay Area investors who were willing to invest across the country by taking meetings via Zoom, which yeah. actually, you know, made local VCs in Chicago and stuff compete and have to invest earlier. So I think actually the Chicago ecosystem has gotten a lot stronger and um, willing to invest earlier and riskier. Capital is kind of the the continuous theme for students, but you know you see different programs as you mentioned like Dorm Room Fund and Contrary to Capital and others that are that are focused on solving this. And then you know we do our best to get the funding for those teams that are have the potential to reach escape velocity to at least give them that runway to to make it to a point where they can go raise from institutional um, investors. Awesome. And uh, what do you see as like the biggest opportunities to improve the garage and how you support? Uh, student entrepreneurship is it do you yeah. see like gaps in your funding or is there another problem that you want to solve funding always helps um <laughs> but uh no i think the garage is like two things one is like this community of students um i think this is one of the most underrated thing is a space like the garage could be a really competitive space when you have students who've been successful and raised millions of dollars and come in with idea and traction and revenue um, but it's actually this really supportive community where students a couple steps ahead are helping those behind um, they share their wins and fails and basically like crowdsource problem solve for each other. Uh, then the second entity I think is our network. So we're a team of nine at the garage. And as I mentioned, we have students working on medical devices, food and beverage, enterprise software, consumer marketplaces, nonprofits, media. So I think of us really as a network catalyst, right? And that we're connecting students to mentors, advisors, experts, individuals out in industry that can help be, uh, you know, advisors and guidance for them. Um, and I think what's really cool is the garage is kind of like a flywheel. So we have a bunch of alums who've graduated. They're still working on their startups. They've raised a bunch of money, um, but they had such a great time at the garage and they got so much out of it that they still want to give back. And so um, they serve as mentors. They come back as judges um, and they make it more accessible for current students to have the success that they've had. Um, I actually just rehired for the role that I originally started in working with the garage, which is primarily working with alumni, founders, operators, and investors um, to build this community to support them. And then, you know, plug them back into students at the garage. So when I when I go back to like thinking about what what are the biggest levers we have to help people be successful when it comes to entrepreneurship and startups, it all comes down to people. Um, and so having kind of that network catalyst focus of pulling in more folks that we can connect to current students, I think gives us the most leverage. Cool. Uh, you mentioned you have uh, this like full-time staff that is running the garage. I also saw you guys have some student staff and then you mentioned some professors are teaching classes out of the garage. Can you talk more about the faculty involvement, uh, I guess, or is it just like teaching specific classes at the space or are there other ways they're involved uh, with the garage? Yeah, so to be clear, um, the garage doesn't teach any classes. We don't have any faculty. We're all extracurricular. There are other entrepreneurship entities at Northwestern, like the Farley Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, which is in the engineering school or um, entrepreneurship at Kellogg, which has a bunch of courses for you know MBA students. Um, so they use the space to teach out of and occasionally, you know, we have faculty who will do a session on some subject of like AI or something in their expertise kind of as a talk, but yeah. nothing, no kind of official linkage between like faculty and the garage. Gotcha. And then uh, last question, is there anything I didn't ask about that you think is important to know for either a student, yeah, a student considering uh, the garage? Yeah, we touched on it a bit, but I think like, and again, we, we kind of talked about this before we press record, but like all the knowledge and information is out there about entrepreneurship and startups, but the real important thing is the people. Um, we had our first ever uh, alumni startup summit back in August. So we flew in 30 alums that are still running their companies that they started at the garage from across the country back to the garage for like a one day kind of summit and workshop. Um, and so much good has come of that because again, you have this trusted community where they're willing to talk about fundraising tactics and they're willing to talk about like what's not going great in their business. Um, and so I think especially for first time founders, student founders, early founders, um, finding your tribe and your community where you can have these conversations with folks both at your stage and at your level, but also a step or two up is going to be the biggest difference maker for you um in having in getting like the knowledge and the feedback and the connections to to help you be successful uh and then the second thing i'll shamelessly plug is behind me uh, i co-authored this book founded the no bs guide for student entrepreneurs uh it's available on amazon it's basically like all the knowledge from the first five years of starting and running the garage and what we tell students and a super quick easy to read book so i would uh, recommend picking that up it's used in about a dozen universities and high schools across the countries right now and that's kind of always expanding 
Awesome. I'll uh, make sure to link it in the interview notes. Uh, thank you so much, Mike, for joining me today. Yeah, nice to meet you, Karen. Thanks.